Hey friends, it's Holly from Chic Antique and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be making over this damaged MDF dresser. I got this piece for free and it does have significant damage. You can see here on the top there are scratches. We have a missing handle on the bottom drawer. And we also have significant damage to the MDF. MDF is essentially pressed cardboard. So when water gets on it, it expands and breaks apart. There are several pieces on here that are solid wood, but most of it is MDF. You can see on the top here, there is significant water damage. The plastic coating on top of the MDF has been removed and the MDF has bubbled through it. So this skirting at the bottom here is solid wood. It is very scratched. The drawers are MDF. We're missing a corner here. And then the housing for the drawers are solid wood. So we have a combination of MDF and solid wood. We're going to start by first doing some repairs. So I'm going to reattach the glides to some of these drawers where they have come apart. So I'm going to put it back in its rightful place. I'm going to drill pilot holes into the MDF so that it doesn't split. And then I'm going to screw this in using very small screws. This is gonna secure it and make sure that it doesn't come apart again. And I'm screwing these in by hand and using my body weight to push these into the MDF surface. Next, I'm gonna be removing the hardware. I always like to do this before cleaning because there can be a buildup of dust behind the hardware. And I'm also going to be replacing this hardware, so I need to remove them regardless. I'll be using a TSP cleaner to clean this really well. This is Pristine Clean by Silk, which is made by Dixie Bell Paint Company. With MDF pieces, especially ones that have had water damage, you really want to use a minimal amount of water when you're cleaning it and wiping it down. So I made sure to squeeze out my rag really well because if I have too much water in there, then the water damaged areas are just gonna absorb that water and bubble up even further. So you wanna minimize your water usage as much as possible. I'm going to be cleaning every inch of this piece, the outside, the inside, the drawers, the drawer housing underneath the drawers and everything in between. And here's how that water looked after my first pass. After letting that dry, I'm coming back with clean water and rinsing that off. After letting everything dry really well, we're going to tackle this bubbled MDF. I'm gonna start by using 120 grit sandpaper on my orbital sander and we're gonna smooth this out as best as we can. Not only is this gonna smooth down the bumps, but I'm also going to use this over the entirety of the piece. A shiny slick surface isn't going to create a good bond with paint, so you always need to scuff sand before you paint, no matter what kind of paint you're using. I'm also doing the same thing on the bottom sides of the dresser because they had had slight bubbling as well. And then I'm gonna continue with this 120 grit over the rest of the piece to scuff it up. Okay. 
After using my sander, I'm going to come back and sand by hand using 220 grit sandpaper to smooth out those bumps further and smooth out the rest of the surface so that I don't have any large scratches. So this 220 grit sandpaper is going to smooth that out. After sanding, I'm going to remove all that dust with the tack cloth. Now this MDF surface does need filled. I'll be using DAP plastic wood filler. This does have wood fibers in it, so it's very strong and it is either alcohol or acetone based. So it's not water based, so it's not going to reactivate those bubbles and it's not going to cause any further water damage because it's not water based. So I'm going to press this in firmly in those areas where we have an uneven surface and any scratches. After letting that dry, I'm going to come back again with my orbital sander and smooth that out. Then I'm going to come back with my 220 grit sandpaper and sand again by hand to smooth everything out. And I'm doing this by feel, so if it is feeling jagged or if I'm feeling scratches or it's not smooth, I am feeling with my hand as I go so that I know when I can stop sanding. I also use the 220 grit sandpaper to smooth down these guides because they were pretty rough and they did have some splinters so that 220 grit sandpaper did the trick. Again, I'm gonna use a tack cloth to remove all of that sanding dust. Now I'm gonna be using shellac and clear this is going to act as a sealer for the entire piece and prep it for paint. It's going to seal in all of those areas that I sanded down to MDF. And because this is not water-based, this is shellac-based, it is not going to allow water to get through. This is water-resistant, so it's going to prevent any water damage from occurring in the future. And another perk of this, it does block odors. This piece didn't smell or stink or have any weird odors, but I just think that's a bonus, just in case there were any odors that I didn't notice. So I'm spraying two coats on the entire piece, and I'm also going to be spraying the inside of the drawers as well. So again, it's gonna block in any odors and protect all of this MDF surface from getting damaged in the future. It's just going to seal everything in and protect it really well. After the shellac has dried, I'm coming back with 220 grit sandpaper on a sanding block to scuff up that shellac surface. Because shellac is shiny, if you don't scuff sand it, your paint is not going to adhere. So you need to scuff up the surface so that your paint has something to adhere to. I'm going to be using Silk All-in-One Mineral Paint in the color Hampton Olive. This is kind of like a chameleon color. It looks different in all sorts of lighting, but it is an olive green color. It has a warm brown undertone. It almost looks taupe sometimes. It almost looks gray. It really does change based on the lighting, which is really cool, but that also makes it hard to capture on camera. In this lighting, it almost looks khaki green, which is very interesting. And I apologize for the noise in the back. My neighbor was doing some yard work and trimming their trees, so that's what that loud noise is. I'm using a 2-inch synthetic brush from Home Depot. This is just their in-house brand. Pretty affordable, and I like this one because it allows me to work quickly. It is synthetic, so it's going to minimize brush strokes and it is a little bit stiffer than some of the other brushes that people normally recommend, and I really enjoy that. I like a stiffer brush. It allows me to work quickly, thus preventing lots of texture and brush strokes.
This is an all-in-one paint, which means it has a built-in stain blocking primer, paint, and top coat all in one. And it does have a matte finish, so if you're looking for more of a sheen like satin or gloss, you will want to use a top coat over this to get that sheen you're looking for. But if you like a soft matte finish, then you'll really like how this paint looks on its own. This paint is kind of a hit or miss for me sometimes. It does claim to have self-leveling properties, but sometimes I find that I just get so many brush strokes even with using a synthetic brush and not overworking the paint. It just is hard to use sometimes. A lot of people say this is beginner friendly paint. I think the idea of it is beginner friendly because it cuts down on your steps. You don't need to use a primer. You don't need to use a top coat. But it is kind of a finicky paint in my opinion because it's really easy to get those brush strokes and it's just kind of hard to work with sometimes. I will say if you are getting brush strokes, make sure to try and paint faster. That is the best method that I found. And additionally, if you do still find that you're getting brush strokes, it's always a good idea to sand in between coats. You can use a 220 grit or 320 grit sandpaper to smooth out those brush strokes in between your paint coats. This does need to dry two hours in between, so make sure you are letting it dry fully for those two hours. After the first coat had dried, I noticed there were some imperfections, scratches, and MDF surfaces that I could still see, so I came back and filled those in, let the wood filler dry, and then sanded it with 220 grit sandpaper just to remove those imperfections. I removed the dust with a tack cloth again, and then I came back for my second coat of paint. I used two coats of paint on everything except for the top because I had so many areas that were filled, I needed three coats to get complete full coverage. I don't think that's a super big deal because not only is this a very small surface, so it wasn't that much paint overall, but because this has a built-in top coat, adding another coat is going to add more durability. So I probably would have added a third coat anyway, even if I had full coverage just to get as much durability out of the top as possible. Additionally, if you're worried about durability with this paint, you can use a top coat over it for insurance and peace of mind. You can also use wax with this. Personally, I prefer clear coat, so that's what I usually use, but a wax will work with this too, if that's what you prefer.
Have you noticed how much this paint color has changed just in the past couple minutes of footage? It's crazy. It almost looks gray here, but a couple clips ago, it was totally green. Now it looks green with a gray undertone. <laughs> it's so interesting, but I really do enjoy it. Now that we're done painting, I'm going to line the drawers with this wallpaper that I got on Amazon. I am not an expert whatsoever at lining drawers, but this is just my approach. So I measure by eye, cut it out, and I do like having excess. That way I can make sure I have the exact right measurement and I don't have to worry about putting it in perfectly straight. So I can just cut the excess off with a box cutter. I find it easier to go section by section, so I'm going a couple inches at a time removing that backing and I'm pressing it down from the center and then moving outward with my hand to smooth out any bubbles or wrinkles. And then after it's all done, I'm removing all of the excess with a box cutter. Now we're gonna be replacing the hardware. I got this 10 pack from Home Depot. They are a sort of black bronze distressed look and they have a little bit of copper detail. And now that this makeover is complete, I just want to remind you what we started with. And here is how it looks now. Thank you guys so much for joining me on this makeover today. I hope you found it enjoyable to come along for the process of this makeover. I'm really thrilled with how it turned out and I'm very glad that I was able to save this piece and give it another chance at life. It did start out pretty rough around the edges, but I was able to repair it and get it back into good condition so that it can be usable and also be aesthetically beautiful in a new home and I hope it goes to someone who will appreciate it and I hope you guys like it too. Make sure to leave me a comment before you go letting me know what you think. Do you like this color? Do you prefer brighter colors or more neutral plain colors? Let me know. If you like this style of content make sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell if you haven't already 
That way you'll be notified every time I upload. And before you leave, feel free to binge watch a couple of my videos. I'll have my most recent upload linked in the eye above, as well as down below in the description. Again, I thank you guys so much for joining me on this makeover. I really appreciate your support and kindness, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Why do people always use duct tape to fix broken drawers? This is your PSA not to do this. Stop doing this. Oh good, it's raining on my water damage piece. It's the best thing about Oregon. It can just rain at any moment with no warning. Thank you, Oregon. Something has to go wrong. These, these are way too long. <sighs> they look cute though.